This conference right. will now be recorded. Well, good morning, everyone. This is Kelly Augustine at the Nacogdoches County Chamber office proper here on North Street. I have colleagues on the uh, call as well from different satellite locations that we'll hear from later. As you just heard, this call is being recorded and uh, we have invited our media friends to join us today. Thank you for being here. I also want to mention uh, supporters of our conference call and that would include Burke as a sponsor and also Excel ER and the Overlook at Nacogdoches. Thank you to those businesses and the people behind them. All right, this call is being recorded and available on our YouTube channel later. You're welcome to go to YouTube directly and find it there, or we'll try to get the links posted on the Chamber social media platforms too, so you can uh, get replays and please share with your friends. We'd love that. I'm going to take a moment just to mention that we had a wonderful uh, presentation lined up for you with Luke Legate uh, for Texas Oil and Gas Industry. However, Mr. Legate had an emergency this morning, so he is not going to be able to um, join us today. Maybe we can have him back in the future. Uh, for the moment, I'd like to ask the president and CEO of our Chamber of Commerce, Mr. C. Wayne Mitchell, to give us uh, comments and a welcome from his location. Well, again, thank you, uh, everybody, for joining the call, and thank you, Kelly, for opening it up. Uh, just brief comments this morning is that, again, we all will keep Mr. Legate and his family in our prayers. Our understanding is he's taking a family member to the hospital as we speak, so uh, it, it must be a pretty serious situation, and we'll uh, we'll pray that uh, it's, a minor, it's a minor incident. We'll have Luke back at another time to give us a sense of what's going on in the oil and gas industry uh, uh, here in Texas and about the initiative that he's spearheading. I uh, do want to let you know that uh, I'm working remotely for the next few days. I had a bout with the uh, COVID has tested positive, and I'm just waiting to get through the period of uh, quarantine until I can get back in the office. But as I think most of you can see, I'm as good as I, I'm as good as I normally get. So, uh, uh, and uh, I, I believe the worst is behind me. But uh, uh, and um, and uh, I feel comfortable that the chamber's in capable hands under Kelly's leadership. Uh, and uh, uh, we do have a big event this week, and that's our past presidents and past chairs, a few of which are on this call right now. And I uh, reception on Thursday between the hours of 11 and 2. Uh, if, you're, uh, if you're available and you can make it over to the chamber, we'd love to see you uh, both current leadership and, and past leadership is going to have an opportunity to have a relaxed forum. So uh, I thought in, in, in the absence of Mr. Legate, it would be a good opportunity for us to talk a little bit this morning about uh, uh, Chamber Days in Austin, which will take place on the 14th, 15th, and 16th of 2023. It's the date when we will journey to Austin as a group. Leadership Nacogdoches will be joining us, and that will be about 35 people, plus uh, around 70, 75 to 100 others, uh, along with our uh, partners from the Angelina uh, Lufkin Area Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we'll all go down there and uh, spend uh, three days uh, communicating with regulators, legislators, and department heads about the uh, priorities for uh, Nacogdoches uh, County and uh, the various uh, enterprises in this community. So it's going to be a real productive session. My board has recently ratified uh, the uh, list of priorities for 2023. That'll be somewhat of a moving target as the legislative session progresses, but we're pretty confident that uh, the, the items that they've identified are going to be the critical issues uh, for this community in the next year or two. And uh, we will uh, uh, be very uh, proactive in communicating our priorities to, to the legislative delegates and uh, department heads in Austin. Uh, to give you a few more details about Chamber Days in Austin and how this thing's going to work, uh, I've asked Kelly if she would kind of give us a profile, and then we'll progress into the uh, report. So that would be it for me. Thanks, Kelly. 
Thank you, Wayne. Um, I just posted a link in the chat and that will take you to the web page. We'll keep updates there as well as our social media site posts. Uh, the Tuesday, February 14th, Valentine's Day, I love that we'll all be together at the state capitol and uh, mainly going to be participating in some small group meetings. Uh, leadership Nacogdoches will be working with Leadership Lufkin to um, hit some offices at the capitol and uh, do our thing there, as well as some of our community leaders. Again, as Wayne mentioned, our priorities will be in hand so that they can make strategic um, in your face meetings with uh, folks that are going to be representing us in the 88th legislative session. You'll also see on that web page a link to our full slate of legislative priorities. So those have been approved by our board. They are now posted and we will start circulating those priorities in our chamber circles right now. The agenda has not been set, but you will see that uh, coming soon. Um, going back to the day's activities on Wednesday, February 15th, that's uh, probably what most people are accustomed to when we go to the Capitol. We'll have large group meetings, breakout sessions with speakers. We'll have a large group photo that'll be posted on the agenda too, so you can make the photo, make sure you're in that. And then the big reception uh, held that Wednesday, February 15th, um, evening evening time and i believe we'll be at the austin club this year we will be inviting uh, all legislators and their staff members so uh, it's going to be a large group gathering with lufkin nacogdoches the university angelina college representatives and then state legislature and other agency heads so uh, please check your schedules uh, consider joining us yourselves if you would like to go through one of our room blocks, either through the Nacogdoches or Lufkin, it's your choice. Either or is open to you. We'd like to get those uh, taken care of now. So if you're interested in the one that the Nacogdoches uh, chamber is working on, it's $139 a night starting price. And uh, we can talk to you more about that. If it's, if that's a hotel, by the way, uh, off, or away from downtown, away from the capital. So there is a bit of driving associated with this hotel. It's the Austin South Park Hotel. The Hilton Austin Hotel, Lufkin Chamber is working with that room block. You're welcome to that. The price is a little higher, 279 starting per night. Uh, you have options to book online, to call, and uh, get in on that right now if you prefer to be downtown Austin for this event. And of course, you can always make your lodging arrangements on your own too at your favorite hotel or family member's spare bedroom. Does anyone have any quick questions about Chamber Days in Austin 2023 for Wayne or myself? Great. I hope we'll. Uh, yeah, I do. All I do. Yes, there any scholar I'm going to be broke. Is there any scholarships available to go? No? Maybe okay. maybe uh, a private auction, Gary Lee, a day with Gary Lee okay. before the event. We'll see how much money you can raise off of that. All right. I'll, I'll go to, I'll get somebody to go, go fund me or something on the Facebook or whatever. Thank you. You're innovative. That's innovative thinking. Thank you. Okay, uh, we're going to go a little out of order and um, ask Nancy Wyndham with Texas Forest Country Partnership if she would like to say a few words because she is going to have to jump off our call for another engagement. Thanks, Kelly, Wayne. Hello, everybody. Just a quick uh, notice I had mentioned earlier, I just got back from vacation, but Several of our regional partners have uh, published and shared some regional data. I don't have those with me right here at my fingertips, but I'll send those in to the chamber. Um, that's from either Workforce Solutions, Workforce, the Texas Workforce Commission, or our Office of Economic Development and Tourism. The region, our region is very busy right now with new projects, which I'm excited to report. So appreciate all of your, your support. And for those of you um, 
let's ask some jacks um and have a merry christmas but i'll be sending those those uh, that data into the chamber uh, sometime later this afternoon. Thank you very much and appreciate it. Thank you for supporting regional economic development. It is important and it's a necessity to push and uh, support our region and market us across not only just our state, but through the United States and globally. Thank you so much. Thank you, Win uh, Nancy. We appreciate you greatly for that information. Okay, I'm not seeing anyone with our city manager's office. And unless I'm missing uh, someone with Stephen F. Austin, uh, Nancy, I know as a regent, if you cared to give an update, you're welcome to. Well, I don't have the numbers. Uh, I know I've been on vacation for a week, but we did have graduation uh, this last weekend, which we celebrate the accomplishments of our faculty, staff, and students, and uh, wish everybody a safe uh, and Merry Christmas. Thank you for your support as we have gone through the process. I, d I probably missed the last call here, but we appreciate everybody's input on the um, discussions and the decision with the affiliation. And we can't help but be very optimistic and, and look for a great thriving future for SFA, for Nacogdoches, Nacogdoches County, our region and, and, and the world. How about that? Because we do have many international students here. Thank you. Great update. Oh, you know, one, one thing, I'm sorry, I've always got one more thing I think about when I get through. The Cary Center, for those of you that are not familiar with our Cary Center, the Center of Applied Research and Rural Innovation, Marianne Rojas, if she has already given a report, I apologize, but I look forward to hearing from her on this call in the, in the future. I don't know, has she reported yet, Kelly? She would be a good one to put on because I know she is doing a lot of outreach in the region. We just attended the rural, uh, the Texas Tribune had an event in Lubbock. She and I went and it was an, an excellent meeting. Lonnie Hunt with DEGCOG was honored as um, broadband. I forgot the official name for the honor that he received, but on a statewide basis, the Texas Tribute uh, recognized him as, the, uh, as a supporter for the broadband. It was their first award in that category or that title. And we were very proud of him for that. So. Thank you. Thanks for that information. Did anybody have a question for Nancy? Also in that SFA uh, strain, I'd like to mention the Chamber's SFA Chamber Connection Group is changing their meeting time now. Uh, we will now, starting in January, be meeting on Wednesday morning, second Wednesdays of each month at 830. That's an online call if anyone's interested in joining. Uh, the purpose of this group is to connect business leaders with decision makers at SFA. And uh, it's a great information sharing opportunity, plus you uh, make some new contacts on these calls as well. So if you're interested, the next one will be 8.30 a.m. Wednesday, January 11th. And uh, we have those meetings through GoToMeeting as well, so you can do it from wherever you are. Okay, moving on, I see Casey Foster with the EDC group. Hi, Casey, do you have updates for us today? Good morning, everyone. Um, the only update I do want to make sure I mention is our email situation. So our NEDCO email addresses have been down for about a week and a half now. As of yesterday, we got them forwarded to our city emails, which is also a step in the right direction. Unfortunately, the emails um, from the past week and a half are lost in cyber land somewhere. So if you sent an email to us, just please resend it or give us a call. Um, luckily, this is a very quiet time of year for this to happen. So. Um, we are back up and running though and should be getting all forwarded emails. So that's the main update and I look forward to talking to you all again soon. Great. Any questions for Casey? All right. And thank you, Casey, for serving uh, with the business development group. So we'll be looking forward to updates for the next year on our upcoming seminars. 
Okay, in this uh, same economic development subject, I would like to ask if Cassandra Stokes would like to give any updates from the SBDC now or later in the call. Hey there. Um, yeah, I, I just have one thing. I know I've talked about this trying to get my camera on here um, uh, several months ago, but I, I do want to let you know that Angelina College received a grant for small businesses to train their employees. Um, all the training must be provided by a public community or technical college. No third party vendor training is allowed. Um, the training must be selected from active course catalogs and schedules, um, credit uh, courses, continuing education online or other available unpublished courses um, are payable. The employer must uh, pay the prevailing wages in the local labor market for the trainees funded under the grant. If you have any questions, uh, you can reach out to me, um, but we hope that we have small businesses participate in this since Angelina College has received, uh, received the grant. Other than that, we had a great session uh, last week at the chamber. It was almost standing room only, so um, turned out really good and we're excited to uh, get uh, on with our planning for the February um, business development session. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Cassandra. We appreciate your report and all your help. Any questions for Cassandra? Okay, I don't mean to put anyone on the spot. Uh, one of our regular presenters here, Sherry Cheney Morgan with Visit Nacogdoches, would you like to share some info with us? Sure. Um, good morning, friends. Um, I want to first of all remind you that events are winding down for the year. We have our last permitted event coming up this Saturday. It's a toy drive, food drive, um, and a little car show that it's all taking place around the Convention and Visitors Bureau this Saturday. Uh, they say two to eight, um, definitely starting at two, but I imagine that they'll be not there until 8 p.m. because that is a very long time, um, but at least until four. Uh, so come on out and if you have some non-perishable food items to donate, um, or some toys, some gently used or new toys. Uh, their goal is to collect all these things and donate them to local charities. Uh, and it's three different groups coming together to put on that event. Also going on, we have been so blessed the last three, four years to partner with the Burt Rees Christmas Lighting um, Contest. And for this year, some reason, we don't have that many entries going on. We partner with Reese Jewelers, Charlene, and um, her daughter, Shay. And uh, it is all in memory of uh, Mr. Burt Rees, who was known for his flamboyant, um, highly detailed uh, uh, Christmas light decorations every year. And so in his honor, we're keeping his memory alive. There are um, cash prizes and gift certificates up for grabs, categories for homes of all sizes, as well as businesses. You can decorate your business and enter. Uh, there's a Facebook page for it. Um, there's more info at visitnacadoches.org slash Bert, B-E-R-T-R-E-E-S, Bert Trees. Uh, so please uh, join up. That's a fun thing for the community. And as we have uh, Christmas break starting up, we'll be seeing more visitors. And around this time of year, they're always looking for neighborhoods uh, that they can drive through to see Christmas lights. So even if it's your mailbox, even if it's um, inflatables in your front yard, um, if you've done something, um, let's show it off. And um, last Friday, no, Friday the 2nd was Joanna Temple's last day with us. Uh, since then, I've been working on rewriting and retooling uh, the purpose of that job and the job description, um, mainly because Joanna, as we all know, is irreplaceable. So 
not even going to try and replace her. So we uh, reworked. It still has overall the general duties of that job, but it is now much more an entry level position um, for people that are wanting to pursue a career in tourism and hospitality on the CVB level. Uh, there's not that many of those to be had. And um, because of this team's hard work and putting ourselves out there, we have garnered a reputation of, um, of excellence in servicing visitors and attracting them to our destination. So um, we were sort of called upon by some of the industry leads in the state to um, where we can make those entry level uh, offerings available for young professionals so that they can dip their toe in. Um, that doesn't mean that it's not open for everybody. Um, it is going to be group servicing and sales. So a little bit of sales, a little bit of working with groups um, and recruiting new groups to come in um, to Nacogdoches. So, uh, and I think the benefit that I am just not allowed, I try to list on the job, um, posting as you get to work with Mike Bay. So that's invaluable, priceless. Um, and uh, yeah, we have we have a good time over here and we do lots of work, um, but it's we can see the benefit of the work that we put in on the faces of the people that get to enjoy it. Um, other than that, looking forward to next year. Uh, this is the end of our first quarter. Our fiscal year starts in October. Um, uh, Mike is in the process of sending out the, um, oh, what do you call it? Sign up genius. Um, that's what you call it. The sign up genius to volunteers. So if you've ever thought about um, dipping your toe in the volunteer world and helping us out here at the CVB, um, we would love to have you. And I encourage you to at least try it and see if it's something that makes your skirt fly up. Uh, and if it does, you can stay on with us. And if not, well, at least you gave it a try. But um, Mike is always happy to help train people on what to do. And um, it's you see Nacogdoches through a, a different vantage point when you volunteer and tell your story to the visitors and tell the story of Nacogdoches to the visitors. So, um, But all of y'all have the happiest of holidays and look for new things coming in the new year from the CVB. And um, yeah, that's it. Thank you for all that you do in ways big and small to help make Nacogdoches a great place to visit. Thank you, Sherry. Any questions for our executive director of Visit Nacogdoches? Well, I see our city manager has joined us. Mario Canizares, good to see you. Would you like to give us an update? Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, apologize if there's an echo. I'm in a large meeting room here at the rec center. We just finished with the manager's meeting. Um, sure, uh, we had our last official city council meeting uh, last Tuesday. So the remainder of the year, in theory, the council's off, but not really. They are meeting tomorrow and Thursday to interview approximately 20 people for our capital needs advisory committee. Uh, we're hoping that they are able to to uh, in, interview them and uh, select a number of folks to participate in that process that they'll start in uh, early 2023 through the spring, uh, maybe even early to the early summer to look at all of our capital needs uh, to then uh, recommend to city council a potential bond program for next November. Uh, so that's one of the charges that this committee will be doing. And so hopefully we'll know more in the next couple of days on who the committee will be. Uh, the other thing, too, is uh, many of you have heard us talk uh, throughout the last number of months with uh, updates to our comprehensive land use plan and downtown master plan. Uh, the consultant team, DTJ, is in town uh, uh, tomorrow. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, tomorrow and Thursday. And one of the things that we're doing is tomorrow night at the brewery, uh, just a meet and greet with with the consulting team starting around 5 30 to about 7. so if you're out and about uh, i'd love for you all to meet uh, the consulting team along with city staff uh, be happy to uh, i won't necessarily treat you to a beer because if ryan shows up i'll just run out of money but we'll be happy to to have you there just to meet with the team and and say hello and get to know them 
And then lastly, uh, something that's kind of just pressing right now, um, I don't know if you've seen, but there's potentially uh, some bad weather coming into town in the next few hours. So uh, I've been told that between noon and maybe four, three or four o'clock, we should have some the potential bad weather with uh, winds up to 80 miles an hour, uh, potential hail and heavy winds or heavy winds and rain. So just be apprised of that. So if you're out and about, just just take cover and be, be weather aware of uh, pending weather here in the next uh, few hours late in the afternoon. So that's all I've got. And I appreciate it. And you all have a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays and hopefully get a chance to uh, visit with you all next year. Thank you. Thank you Mario. for that. Mario, in view of the, the pending bad weather, are there any messages that we should distribute to our memberships that would be um, helpful to folks? Yeah, well, Wayne, I think uh, uh, we should be posting some things on our social media site. So if you want to share those, uh, and if they're not posted, they will be posted here shortly. But if you want to post those uh, or share those with your with your uh, members and other team members, that'd be fantastic. But But it's out of the National Weather Service. Uh, with those updates. And so, again, I would just pay attention to local news uh, to make sure they, they're the ones that are going to have the eyes on the ground uh, to alert people of what to do if, if there is a, an emergency. I know in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, there are some uh, tornado warnings and a few, uh, I don't know if it was tornadoes or, or straight line winds, but it's caused some damage to some facilities uh, and stores in, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So uh, that same system is coming through town. So I'd just be aware of that. We'll take a look at the website, Mario, and uh, and move move forward. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any other questions for Mario? Okay, moving into our partner reports with the Nacogdoches Exposition and Civic Center. Anita Scott is on the call. Hi, Anita. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank y'all for having me. I'm Anita Scott, the director for the Nacogdoches County Expo and Civic Center. And uh, I've been on vacation the last couple of days. I went to Las Vegas for the National Rodeo, uh, Rodeo Finals, and so that was a lot of fun. So I'm just getting back today. Uh, my e email inbox is full, so <laughs> I've been quite busy this morning. But uh, Luckily, this is kind of a slow time for us here at the Expo Center for the next um, three to four weeks. And so our um, staff is uh, using some of their vacation time and comp time that they've built up back in October. And so we, we are uh, utilizing our time right now to re uh, rest and recoup, I guess. But um, in the meantime, we are also getting ready um, for the for the Nacogdoches Pro Rodeo and Steer Show that's going to be happening in March. And so those are things that we are working on. Um, but I'm also working with a promoter um, to bring a new event to Nacogdoches. It's the American uh, Bucking Bull Association is um, working with um, us on an event in, in January. So I'll be uh, sharing that information as it finalizes. Um, so that's something exciting that's happening, and along with a few other events that we've got going on. But um, we're here at the Expo Center. If you're looking for a place to hold your next event or uh, meeting, give us a call here at the Nacogdoches Expo Center. Our phone number is 564-0849. We also have a Facebook page that you're welcome to uh, follow, like it, and share it. Uh, that's where we keep up uh, with all of the information and letting you know what's happening here at the Expo. And we have a, a website also and an event calendar on there as well. It's the NACExpo.net. And so that's what I have uh, for today. Um, and that's it, Kelly. Thank you. Thanks, Anita. Uh, you know, March is not that far away. So oh, when no. you start talking about the pro rodeo, I'm thinking, well, that's but it's not it's not that far. So uh, I, I had the yeah. privilege of looking through the merch that has been created for the next pro rodeo here in Nacogdoches. It's yeah. outstanding. And uh, there's yeah. So did you want to mention that or did I miss that? Yeah. So, yeah. So in between our calls, um, the one that I, we took this morning and um, now I actually already placed an order with Unlimited Designs. Miss uh, Janet is um, doing all of our merch for us for the rodeo, which is benefiting the Nacogdoches uh, JCs, by the way. 
Um, and so I will let Janet talk a little bit about um, her the website that she's created for us. And, and like I said, all of the sales is, and proceeds is going to um, benefit the Nacogdoches JC. So please, um, you got you all, if you will, make your purchases and stuff. Um, it all benefits a very worthy cause. Go ahead, Janet, you take over. <laughs> um, well, we've set up an online store. Um, we have sublimated shirts, bottles, tumblers, hats, uh, bags. I'll put the link in the chat box, but all you have to do is go online and order it. Um, Anita brought up something we missed. And she was the first order. Um, you can come to the shop and pick them up. Uh, give me a few minutes after we get off of here to take put that third option, shipping option on there for you so that you're not charged shipping and handling. And uh, like she said, it benefits them. Uh, and we're excited. So about it. I'll get the bag right fast, uh, Mary. I mean, uh, Janet, I've got the ba one of the bags that I've already purchased. I'm going to show you guys. So go ahead and keep talking. <laughs> well, I'm going to get some of this stuff if y'all want to see it. But I mean, they're really cool. Well, OK, Anita's going to show us this one. I, I love the design for the shield, by the way. Thank you. Great. This is a, this is a great event for Nacogdoches. Awesome. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll go get some of the bottles and tumblers and I'll just show them up in the window. Y'all just watch my corner of the world up here. Okay. All right. Uh, Anita's, got her tumbler. Anita's got her gear. She's outfitted. <laughs> okay. Well, Thank we'll Thank feel free to do what, what you want to do there. Jan, we will we'll, um, move along. Thank you, ladies, unless someone else had a question for, for you. All right, I see our president of the Nacogdoches Area United Way on the call with us this morning. So uh, we're going to hear from Mr. Gary Lee Ashcraft. Well, we haven't been on vacation, as a few of you have. We've been uh, very busy. Thank you, Caroline, uh, doing the work. Uh, we've had a successful turkey trot, right? And uh, I'll let Caroline uh, talk a little bit about that in just a second. We had a very successful parade with one exception, and that is yours truly, for some odd reason, was the Grand Marshal riding on the back of a Mercedes, and I got a little too exuberant and threw out my back. Uh, I will be talking to the oral, not the oral, but the uh, surgeon here later on this morning. Um, so, uh, if the, the point is, if you participate in the parade, don't get too carried away. It could be dangerous. Uh, but we had a ton of people in the parade, uh, representing Cardi and I, uh, raised the volume as we went through the parade and everybody had a great time. I do believe if you were there to see the, uh, the nine flags, I guess, uh, uh Christmas parade that we put on this year. Uh, we even had a banner. Thank you, Chris Gilbert, uh, to uh, lead us. It said United Way. But anyway, uh, next up is tonight, uh, this evening. I hope you all will come out starting rain or shine or tornado or whatever. We don't really worry about that. I don't. Uh, we will be at Rex Perry Autoplex and we will give away my uh, Lexi. That's the uh, 2022 Hyundai. Uh, accent that is fast and furious. I love that car. And I'll, I'm just going to tell you who the five finalists are for the car, just in case you're interested. One is a young woman named a Amber Hobson. She is with ETEC. Uh, Dorothy Williams, who is with Cadence Bank. Uh, Jessica Corley, who is with the County of Nacogdoches. And Naya Rockler, who is with, uh, she works at uh, Brook, uh, Brooks Quinn Jones. Uh, uh, for NISD. Uh, these folks uh, did what we call fair share. I think we've explained that enough, uh, which is a, a, a good uh, donation to the United Way. Any donation is wonderful. Uh, and they qualified to win the car. The last person I'm sure you don't know that's uh, up uh, for maybe winning this car is our own Francis Spurl uh, with Austin Bank. So uh, uh, y'all come out. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I asked Rex if there was going to be a cash bar. There will not be, but we'll have plenty of uh, uh, wonderful sodas and food and uh, possibly a band and I'll be there and uh, Carolina will be there and Kenny Reno will be there and it'll be 
just an awesome, awesome event. So uh, come on out. It's really fun, really fun to see the faces of the person that wins the car. Uh, Rex provides gifts for all of the four uh, runner-ups. And we have a special door prize for those, anybody that shows up, no matter what you did or donated or whatever. Uh, and that is a night stay at our own Fredonia Hotel. Uh, totally a gift. And so Wayne, if you show up at that thing, I think you're coming. Uh, maybe you're not now since you have COVID. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, if you attend that thing tonight, uh, Mario, you might just win you a night stay at the Fredonia Hotel. Uh, so that's that. Caroline's going to tell you about the next thing coming up because I can't. That's uh, my little deal, and I'd love to have you all out, and then we'll get off this call. This uh, is not my last call. There's a lot of last things for me. In case you don't know, I'm leaving the United Way president and CEO position at the end of the year. I have some other things that I'm going to do that I'll just uh, not talk about right now that they're really fun. That's to do with the basketball team. But uh, I have enjoyed these calls. Uh, unless Wayne just prohibits me from doing it, I'm going to be jumping on the calls uh, going forward. I like seeing you all. Uh, I'll try to be quiet. I won't have anything to report on. Uh, but uh, And I will be in Austin reminding you, Wayne, I'm a former lobbyist, so uh, I can get after it for the... Uh, uh, the agenda of the uh, Chamber of Commerce. So uh, there you go, Caroline. You want to uh, dig into whatever's coming up real quick? What Whatever's coming up. Whatever's coming up is a big celebration for our outgoing CEO, Gary Lee Ashcraft. So this is open invitation, <laughs> open invitation to any anybody, anybody who has worked with Gary, who uh, has a friendship with Gary, who uh, just wants to come out and hang out with the cool Gary Lee Ashcraft in one of his final days as our United Way CEO. We'd love to have you join us. We want this to be a big celebration for the 13 years of amazing service he has given to our community through his role at United Way. So that is going to be, uh, it's coming up very soon. We're just we're just party, one party to the next. We got the Rex Perry party tonight, then next Monday, December 19th, um, you can also come and help me celebrate my 35th anniversary because that's what I'm doing on my anniversary. I'm coming to, to Gary's party. Hopefully my husband can show up too. But uh, anyway, that is next Monday uh, at the Fredonia Hotel from four to six o'clock. It's not down the hall in, in a nice room. Instead, it is very appropriately located right outside the Nine Flags Bar, <laughs> in and out of the Nine Flags Bar. But there's that nice hallway there where you've got the view of the pool and all that. So we're going to have, you know, set up tables there that we'll have some appetizers uh, sponsored by McWilliams and Son. And, and uh, then it's, it's uh, I'm sorry, it's it's BY, uh, not buy your own drink, <laughs> something like that. This is a nonprofit after all, but please come and join us. We'll have some appetizers there for you and, and uh, just a chance to honor Gary. So if you, if you want a drink on me, just put it on Mario's tab. That'll be fine since he's <laughs> in, that, in that mode. I do plan to cross dress, so uh, you will find that very interesting. <laughs> well, there you go. So you got to show up and see that, right? And take lots of pictures. So next Monday, December 19th, Fredonia Hotel, outside the bar from 4 to 6 o'clock. We hope to see you tonight at Rex Pier Autoplex at 6 o'clock, next Monday night at 4 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you both. Any questions for Caroline or Gary Lee? I have All a right. question for you, Kelly. What is that thing uh, in front of you? My monitor? Yeah, okay. That makes sense. I thought you had some kind of control panel and I was going to be jealous. It's funny that you said that because I was going to say it's my Star Wars control. You know. Yeah, that's what it looks like from behind. But anyway, proceed. <laughs> Okay, Les did give us a, a heads up that uh, he, Les Linebarger, would have to exit our meeting a little early, but I believe Erin uh, Wyndham, is Erin still with us? She might have had to go to the same meeting, and I think she has. So unless someone had another NISD update, uh, I will give credit and kudos to Dr. Trujillo and his wife, Deborah. I saw them serving as docents at this weekend's Pastor of Homes in the 
president's house on SFA's campus. And uh, they, in my opinion, were thoroughly enjoying themselves. And I just love to see our community leaders out there doing things like that. So if you miss tour of homes and you miss the president's house, you missed hearing Dr. Trujillo's great, uh, great comments on the dining room. And I'll just leave it at that. Um, I can report, uh, Mike told me just this morning, uh, Friends of Historic NAC um, met yesterday afternoon and this was the biggest crowd by far and the net profit to date is uh, just over $17,000 from Tour of Homes this year. So it was, it was a huge event, very well executed and weather held out and everything, but 17 K for a very worthy foundation here in Nacogdoches. Great information. Thank you, Sherry. Okay. We still have a few more minutes. If there's uh, someone I missed or someone with an important announcement for our community, we can have it documented here. Kelly, I'd just like to acknowledge Cassandra Stokes is on the call. Uh, Cassandra facilitated a great discussion at the business development meeting last week um, on hiring practices. And uh, I want to thank you, uh, Cassandra, for the great work you did on that. And uh, and uh, Ned, our NEDCO partners, Carrie and, and uh, Casey and the staff over there, you guys did a great job. So, Cassandra, do you have anything? Um, no, I don't, I don't have anything additional, but, uh, definitely, uh, want to also say kudos to NEDCO and the chamber for, um, all of their efforts as well to, to pull this off, did a great job marketing and stuff. And so, uh, it's my first time to moderate and, uh, and I had lots of fun and I actually learned stuff too. So I'm, I'm looking forward to our February session. Kelly, that's it for me. All right, great. Well, again, that link to Chamber Days and Austin webpage is in the chat. I'm going to leave this meeting open for just a minute or so if anybody wants to grab that. Bookmark it and keep checking back for updates. Uh, we also wish everyone safe and happy holidays. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's. The Chamber will be closing to uh, celebrate the, the holidays as well, but please uh, remember us when you're looking for information or we need to share something, check out our social media sites. Uh, we're all working together to make Nacogdoches the best it can be. So uh, again, thank you, Burke. Thank you, Excel ER and the Overlook and Nacogdoches. I believe this is our last conference call for 2022. We'll see you back in January of 23.